What's going on guys and welcome to the guide. My name is Valerio and today we have another offensive minded video. More specifically, we're going to be looking at counterattacks and helping you guys make the right decisions in fast pace situations. Counterattacking at its best at its highest level will involve turning defense into offense as fast as possible and making decisions on the fly. To get to that point there are some basic tools and some basic principles that you should get accustomed to and that we'll introduce in this video but before we get into that a quick reminder that if you want to get better at FIFA 20 if you want to take your gameplay to the next level definitely check out the Part gaming website for some FIFA 20 coaching as a special Christmas offer the prices for now will be reduced until the 26th of December so definitely check out all the links for everything about that in the description now without further ado let's get straight into the video before we get into the more advanced concepts there are a couple of mechanical features that will help you make the most during a counterattack when on the break and the first thing involves knock-ons. In other words, knocking the ball further ahead of your dribbler so that he can run into open space at maximum speed despite being in possession of the ball. On the screen, you'll notice my player just running back and forth in a skill game and nothing other than holding down the sprint button that is R2 on PlayStation or RT on Xbox is being done. To knock the ball ahead, you can do so by flicking your right stick two times in the direction that you're already running. This will make your player knock the ball further ahead and increase his overall speed. Now the reason you'd want to do this is to explode into space ahead of you. Sometimes that's necessary to do as simply sprinting could give the defenders behind you an opportunity to catch up to you. Of course, you do have to be careful uh, as this is a very situational tool. Knocking the ball on is super useful to leave defenders behind you if you have a fast striker, but it also comes in handy in an open field and you want to maintain the pace of the attack because again, you might have an open field ahead of you, but by using it on your first touch in those situations, you'll be able to leave defenders behind you for good and maintain the pace of the attack. The second tool to mention before we get into more complicated ideas is the threaded through ball or pass. And now obviously a normal through ball or through pass is performed by simply pressing and powering up triangle on PlayStation or Y on Xbox. And you'll want to use this pass when you want to feed a teammate a ball into the open space slightly in front of him. Now to perform a threaded through ball however, on top of pressing triangle or Y, you'll be holding R1 on PlayStation or RB on Xbox. And this will trigger a through ball that launches the ball further into space and is perfect for counterattacks because it'll give you, the user, the ability to truly pass into open space when you have the chance, particularly when on the wing, whether again, it's to launch a player into a wide open field or to make sure the pass has enough depth to it to bypass an opposing fullback who might be in the way and who might be a threat for intercepting a normal through pass that might otherwise get intercepted if it weren't for the depth that the threaded through ball pass gives. Like the knock on this threaded through pass is simply a tool to get you up the field so it's only the start. The next few tips that we're about to cover will hopefully help you guys shape your mindset in the final third when on the break. When you're on a counterattack, reading the defensive line is really important to make sure you always make the best decision possible. Now, what I mean by reading the defensive line is that you take in all the information accessible to you in that specific moment and develop your decision making in a way that pushes you towards the right areas of the pitch consistently. Now, this can range from doing the right skill, the right pass, or simply dribbling towards a specific direction because of the information available to you from seeing not only where you are on the pitch, but also the opponent's defense and any weakness in that moment that you could be trying to exploit. This is obviously going to vary from example to example because no single counterattack is ever exactly the same. But in this case, we had the ball with our fullback in Semedo and we ended up passing it off to Neymar. 
Now, as you can see, the space is all on the flank, and on top of that, in an instant, we can already tell that our opponent has his center back selected, meaning that he is completely dependent on his AI to track our own Semedo who is plunging into space on the flank. As a result, a split second of hold up play with Neymar, where we slowly dribble backwards as we wait for the through ball back to Semedo on the wing, allows us to try and exploit the weakness that we picked up on. And of course, in this case, the weakness is not only the amounts of space on the wing, but also the fact that we knew he wouldn't have been able to keep up with Semedo because like I said, he was too busy controlling the defender who was right behind Neymar, the player that I was controlling. This time, a bit of a different way this can look as we regain possession and begin the quick counterattack before his team can regain the defensive shape. Messi has the ball in the middle of the park and if we look at his defense from top to bottom, you can see his fullback is going to be preoccupied with our winger. His center back is locked on to our Ronaldo who is making a run to the box and his other center back is being selected by our opponent and he is marking it ourselves as we have the ball with Messi. Now just behind us is where the key to everything in this attack is because there's a ton of space and our Neymar is ahead of his CDMs as he runs into space. So for that reason, in this instant, I knew that if I could stall long enough, he'd be in a poor situation with every single defender being busy marking a certain player in my team, and that would be giving our Neymar a free channel of entry into the box. If we play this out, that's exactly what happens as we dribble with Messi in a confident way to not lose the ball, his defense splits, and Neymar enters the gap so he can receive the easy pass into the box. Any counterattack will have a higher chance of success rate when you attack with numbers, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you should be sending everyone forward. That would be too risky for your own team and leave you vulnerable to conceding counterattacks of your own. This concept, however, relates more to the idea of forcing the man advantage on your opponent. In other words, you want to attack with numbers in the right areas, where the ultimate goal is to create favorable situations for your offense. Basically, you want to put yourself in situations where at the very least, you have the same amount of attackers as your opponent has defenders in whichever area of the pitch you attack. But obviously the best case scenario would be to have even more attackers than your opponent has defenders. This is what we're going for in this example here as you can see that there is plenty of space on the upper left hand side of the field but just one defender for my opponent to cover all of that. My thinking in this moment is that rather than just running at him with my Figo, I need to get more players involved. I need to try and get my fullback to push with me so that I essentially create a two versus one situation in my favor on the wing. And the reason you'd want this is to obviously make your opponent uncomfortable and push him down a situation where eventually he will have to make a decision. Now as the play proceeds, our opponent ends up standing in no man's land where he isn't really pressuring our fullback and he failed to cover Figo's run correctly. So as a result, this makes it super easy for us to find the pass work our way towards the goal and eventually get an easy finish. Now at first glance the idea of going backwards might make no sense. Why would you go back if the plan is to counter attack? Why would you go back if you're trying to catch your opponent off guard? Wouldn't going back slow you down? Well like many things in FIFA 20 it really just depends. Sometimes to go forward, you must first retreat. As they say, one step backwards, two step forwards. And with experience, you'll understand that there are times to push forwards where you might read the defensive lines and you'll see spaces that have to be attacked instantly. Other times you have to resist the temptation and realize that doing so will only cause you to lose possession. In practice, it could look a little bit like this. After regaining possession, we move the ball from Allen to Messi. Now, someone stuck on one gear where all he can do is push forward might then proceed to pass from Messi to Neymar and then from Neymar to Ronaldo. Spamming it and committing forward might be rewarding at times and you will break through, but mixing it up is always the best course of action, especially in these situations where as you can see from the minimap, upon receiving the ball, Ronaldo would have been completely isolated in between all of our opponent's defenders. 
by playing out the rest of the play you can see that as opposed to going forward we actually return the ball to Allen we give our team that little bit of extra time to move together as a unit that way by the time we do make it up the field nobody is ever isolated there's always options and it allows us to avoid any dead ends You'll definitely want to make yourself as efficient as possible when on the break during counterattack, regardless of the football game you play, regardless of the FIFA game you play. But I do feel though as if this is particularly important this year in FIFA 20. There are times in this game when opportunities to catch your opponent are rare, so when they do arise it's always best to be prepared. And tools like the knock-on or the threaded through pass can help you move up the field with pace, all the while making sure whoever is behind you does not catch up and ruin your attack. Reading the defense and becoming more aware of what to exploit will help you push you in the right direction and the right path, and it all comes together when you learn when to push forward, when to take a step back, and when to force the man advantage. Nonetheless, that's going to be it for me today. I hope this was of use, and if it was, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for future guides. I'll catch you guys next time.